Right, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we got what happened to all the German kings when Germany unified. This is from History Matters. They do amazing videos. Let's jump straight into this, man. In 1865, before Germany was Germany, it was numerous smaller states. Holy fuck, Many of fuck? which were ruled by kings and had been so for many centuries. Yet, in You know what? I actually never knew that, like, Ger like Germany had, like, an era where it had kings and, well, like, states and shit like this. It's crazy. What the hell? Germany was unified, and all of these kingdoms had been incorporated into the German Empire under the leadership of the German Emperor. And generally, in European Empire. Wait, they, they, had, they had kings? And then they went into, uh, they became an. I actually didn't even know any of this about I Germany. There was only what the room fuck? for one royal family, the imperial one. Which raises German the question, Empire. what became of these other German kings and their kingdoms? Oh, God. So, in 1865, there were six kingdoms in the German world. Hanover, Prussia, Saxony, Wittenberg, Bavaria, and Bohemia. They were all part of the German Confederation, the successor to the Holy Roman Empire, which, like that, was also led by the ruler of Austria, who had been butting heads with the leaders of Prussia over who was to lead... That's his twin right there. <laughs> ...the German-speaking world. These tensions soon led to war with all of the kingdoms siding twins. with Austria over Prussia, which may not have been the best choice since Prussia, with the help of Italy, would go on to win. This saw Prussia grow to this, annexing the Kingdom of Hanover and thereby reducing the number of kings to five. Prussian leadership had wanted to annex Saxony, but given its king's close relationship with the Austrian Emperor, its continued independence was a condition for peace. Now, the Prussians could have kept fighting, but its Chancellor Otto von Bismarck wanted the war over quickly, because he was concerned that France would join the war on the side of Austria, which would make things much more difficult for them. As such, peace and Prussia formed the North German Confederation, which Saxony joined the next year, having previously- Bro, every single video, Prussia, 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 Prussia. Like, it's, it's actually mad, like, where the fuck are they now? Like, I, I actually watched a video on what happened to Prussia, to be fair, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I've totally to forgot. To do so. So what happened to Saxony's king? Well, nothing. The North German Confederation was a federal nation whose states were fairly autonomous. This was because for Bismarck, ousting the King of Saxony would make the other kingdoms much more nervous about joining a German state. As such, the King of Saxony could stay, but in return, foreign policy would be run from Berlin. And this framework was in place when in 1871, these states were added to the German Empire. These three kings had mixed fuck? feelings about it's the so Empire's big. creation, which is why, when it was formed in the wake of France's defeat, Wilhelm wasn't made the Emperor of Germany, but the German Emperor since the first title meant that he technically ruled over their lands and he was their superior, whereas the second title meant that he was the first amongst equals. Obviously, they weren't his equals since Prussia's control over the German Empire was basically absolute, but they got to keep doing fun king stuff. Bloody so what exactly happened to them? <laughs> well, the smaller German kings met the same end as the German Emperor in 1918 at the end of World War I. After the Kaiser's ab They had kings all the way up to World War I? and flight, Germany was declared to be a republic, which saw two kings, Frederick Augustus III of Saxony and Ludwig III of Bavaria, abdicated a few days after the Emperor. Frederick Augustus had hoped to maintain his position, but he was unpopular and blamed for the troubles of the war, and so off he went. The last king to abdicate was William II of Wittenberg, who had been fairly popular with his people, but the revolution- Bro, it sounds so weird. William II, II of Wittenberg. It Germany sounds as a so whole, weird. His position was untenable. Royal king. titles were abolished there in 1919, and whilst they were no longer kings, they got to keep their stuff and held a great deal of social prestige throughout the years of the Weimar Republic. But despite their high social standing, after this, no king nor royal would ever return to Germany. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank interesting. you for watching. Very, very, very interesting video. Wow, a lot of stuff that I actually didn't know about Germany, which is pretty cool. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video as well. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys do want to help out with the channel, as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers, we'll be getting YouTube partner. So appreciate anyone that could drop a subscription to the channel. It really mean a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.